Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Coffee Club podcast. Today, we have a very special guest joining us here in St. Moritz, George and I. We have Cinta Vissa, and I think many of you guys know that we are dating, so there's going to be some inherent bias in today's episode, but <laughs> that's not why we're having her on. I just thought, I was wondering like if when I would get that out of the way, and I just thought I'd just get that out of the way just straight away, so, so everyone knows. But Cinta has, well, obviously she's a teammate of ours. She has an incredibly inspirational story. Came over to the US to go to college as a 400 meter hurdler back in 2019. And then just three years later, she was the NCAA champ in the 1500 and represented Italy at the world champs in Eugene last year. And then this year, joined the team, taking it to a, a whole new level, running 401 and just recently Last week, I guess, just becoming Italian senior champion, national champion in the 1500. So she's got quite the story, and we'll get into that um, very shortly. But first off, we do have another ad read today. George? Once again, episode 98 brought to you by the awesome guys at Camelback supporting the episode. I've got an unfortunate uh, update on the use of my Camelback bottle. Oh, no. One of my favorite things, obviously, in the summer keeps keeps my water uh nice and chilled which i have like i i hate drinking like warm water i always like it chilled but we've had a a recent i know what you're about to say (laughs) a recent heat training meeting uh with olav mad scientist and one recommendation was that we should start drinking like not cold water I, i think it was a perception thing so now my camelback is filled with warm water so it's so much less enjoyable way less fun it's still keeping the room temp water at exactly room temp so (laughs) it's intended use is still working but um i'm just enjoying it a lot less and (laughs) so if you guys want some room temp water to stay room temp uh use use code coffee club all caps for uh for 20 percent off on the website and a bunch of other cool stuff Lots of cool stuff. And Cinta, Cinta enjoys the Camelback. You like your Camelback? Yeah, I love it. That one is mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the cover one gets all Cintas. But uh, yeah, she's uh, been using it for a while now. Keeps her room temp water at room temp as well. I got my coffee when we drive down to Kiavana. Oh yeah, the long drive to Kiavana. Put some coffee in that bad boy. Keeps it nice and warm. Yummy. But without further ado, we'll get into it. Just a short one to get it out of the way. Official World Champ selection did come out in the last couple of days. And the three of us are going to World Champs. Obviously, no surprise for these two. But uh, yeah, Morgan snuck onto the team in the 5K. So I'm pumped to join you guys there. I felt uh, I couldn't really say this last time. I'm not going to say too much about it, but I really, if you've li- listened to the show throughout just this year, I guess the last five months, you will know that I had certainly counted myself out of contention for even competing at the world champs and so to be able to be going there after not competing in it last year is just like it's just crazy i feel very very lucky very fortunate and yeah i'm gonna go out there and try my best kick some booty (laughs) so yeah i just thought i'd just make that official announcement to everyone so we'll see you all in budapest not much more to say about that really george is just doing the steeple if you were wondering because he also was qualified in the 5k I have indeed scratched from the 5K, which wasn't required, fortunately, for Morg to make the team. Or Pasoni, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, if you know has been following his very elaborate <laughs> journey of uh, world champ selection. He's freaked out on the final two yeah. weeks of, <laughs> of the qualification window. Yeah. And, yeah, I, I for a while I thought um, I, thought I should just do both. Um, but most of that was coming from from last year when I, I did scratch the 1500 last year and looking back, like I think that's one of the worst decisions I've made in in my running career and um, can't even remember like looking back why I would have done that, but it was just, just all in on the five. It was just so year. much easier having got the standard and then maybe like Morgan, like I didn't even, maybe I just didn't even realize I was going to make it in the 15 and then, got to worlds it's like oh actually i'm in the ranking i could also run the 1500 but by then it was just kind of counted out and um realizing i should have done it and then thinking this year oh like 
no, I don't want that to happen again. But in reality, um, the steeple is, is first. And if I can run two steeples in four days, which is plan A, um, I'd be pretty fucked anyway by day <laughs> six. So, and all in on the steeple. Yeah. Yeah. All in on the steeple. That's the plan. Hell yeah. So, yeah, that's in shit. Two weeks. Less, less, less yeah. than two weeks. <laughs> Nine days, days or something. So we'll be there. But uh, to get into Cinta's story, we wanted to do a little icebreaker first. We have a list of words. So Cinta, <laughs> Cinta grew up in Italy. She is very proficient at English. But there are some English words that are hard even for those like myself who grew up in English-speaking countries. So we're going to put her to the test today. And we have a list of English words in front of us. And we're going to have her pronounce them and do her best. And then, just to make it fair, George and I have some Italian words to pronounce after. So, oh, okay. so don't worry, Cinta, we'll be joining you. So, you want to go ahead and try to pronounce that? Italian words? Yeah. I just don't fair. <laughs> <laughs> if you think of any others. <laughs> okay. So, go ahead. Can you do that first one? Where is it? Which one? Oh. W1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a hard... This is a, I think this is one that probably... I Every think English. most English speakers <laughs> couldn't say this. <laughs> Take your best shot. Worcestershire. <laughs> it's not bad. Wait, that was <laughs> actually really go good. Oops. Worcestershire. I think that's actually quite good, isn't it? Yeah, I think... How are you meant to say it? Worcestershire? I think it is like Worcester. Worcestershire? Worst, I actually don't know, but I think it's like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you ignore some of those middle letters and it's just like Worcestershire. Yeah. I pronounce it just Worcestershire. So Maybe I don't know if I'm saying it right either. So, sorry, that was a tough one. <laughs> I think you did pretty good. You did. Thanks. All right, second one. <laughs> I would like a fork on the table. Oh, uh, you pronounced that one. <laughs> so this is like kind of an inside joke. Do you know, do you know what this is, George? What is that from? Italian guy Malta. So there's like there's this funny Italian video where he's pretty much playing. He's playing up. He has a, he's saying English words with a super Italian accent. And if you say like I would like a fork on the table with a super Italian accent, it sounds like I would like to fuck on the table. On the table. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that one. All right, the next two. <laughs> Try saying loud and proud. These ones are really hard. These ones like colonel. <laughs> yeah, see that that one's I probably shouldn't have put that in because that's just like you would never know how to say that unless you knew how to say it because that's Colonel. Colonel. Huh? You know Colonel Sanders? Do you know who that is? No. KFC. Okay. Yeah, what about the last one? Mm. Oh, nausea. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Nauseous. Yeah. Okay. Is that is that the same in Italian? No, I just wanted to be there. Smart. <laughs> that was impressive. Yeah, you crushed that one. Phew. Well, good job. All, All right. right. Now it's my time. Yeah. George, <laughs> do you know these? <laughs> no, but I know how to say some of them, kind of. One of those letters has to be silent. <laughs> Which it's, one? It's not, though. That's the thing. It it's looks like, like well, sublieres. Is, that, is it like a is Z it sound? Is it Italian word? Did I make this word up? With an S? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe there's no S on it. Let's just pretend there's no S. Zabliere? It's S. How do you say this one? You meant sgabiliere? Yeah. Which is like the... Huh? Yeah. Okay. No, I think you said it wrong. Yeah, it's supposed to say the S. So how do you say it? Sgabiliere. Okay. Yeah, that's hard. So you do pronounce both the letters? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, most of the Italian words, you just read the way it is. Written. Yeah. All right. That's a good clue for the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> Our next one is funny. Come on. I'm going to go with Kievena. <laughs> Kievena is correct. Kievena. That, that's up for... Kievena. Kievena, guys. True, with the Italian accent. <laughs> that's up for constant debate between... Well, not even debate, but Ritz <laughs> loves saying Kievena. Yeah. Even and though then, every time he gets corrected by Sinta. And Ch. Yeah. <laughs> for Ker. Yeah. Every time. Because that's where, for those who don't know, that's the Italian town that we go to work out in like once or twice a week. And yeah, Dathan always just messes that one up. Then he put a tick. Chiavenna. Yeah. But it's, but it's Chiavenna. <laughs> this next one. Well, what did that first word mean? Laugh. Laugh. Okay. This next one, I think this is pronounced 
Was I think this one is a test of how well you can roll your eyes. That's what I was just thinking. <laughs> Ridarella. Ridarella. No, how would no, you bad. say it? Ridarella. What does that? that mean? It's like when you laugh with a <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. A giggle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Maybe. I guess. <laughs> and this last one. H has to be thick, okay? It's either Gaccio. <laughs> <laughs> it's either Gi- Giacco, Giacco, or is it mm-hmm. Giacco? Giacco. Giacco. Ice. Giacco. <laughs> That's a tough one. You choose them. <laughs> <laughs> wanted to make it fair. Where did you so, find them? Just on the internet. Oh, okay. Just a list of words. Hmm. So, How is uh, Morgan's Italian coming along since her? She's doing good. Yeah. I'm still studying it now. Just because I, he thinks, uh, there's, there's hope for him. He's surrounded by Italians. So. I've taken an extended break from my Italian learning. I I mean, this is the most classic thing. Like, I, I think January 1st, I started learning Italian. And I did it well for probably a month and a half, two months, every day. Are we talking Duolingo? <laughs> yeah. No, we're, talk, we're talking proper, like, full YouTube, on, yeah. like, a, a YouTube yeah. course and then, like, a website course. Really good course. And then okay, I'm not going to like blame it for on this, but then I started making, trying to make YouTube videos again and, and fully training as well and training fully. And then I think I was just too tired. I went on right. the, I went on the Jakob, the Jakob, uh, mindset. Have you heard his quote where he says that he used to read books and then he realized he wasn't training hard enough. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's a real quote from him. He said he used to try to read books and then he thought, oh, just that means I'm, I'm too fresh. And so he says now he trains so hard that he can't read books. Anymore. He can only play Pokemon Go. He can only play Pokemon Go. <laughs> he could definitely read instead of playing Pokemon Go. He can Go. only play Fortnite with his bros. But yeah, so. It's on the back burner for now. On the back burner, hoping to. I do dabble in Duolingo now, very occasionally. But, but everyone's I, dropping. Like, you know, Yard used to do it. He's someone tells break. me that no one has ever learned a language on Duolingo. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm making you like my spanish way stronger but thanks to duolingo because i've never yeah. been in a spanish country to speak it yeah I'm still doing maybe it for like day. vocab i feel like you could like yeah it's hard to believe that you could like you gotta do that and the then do maybe watch netflix tv show or something yeah i think too yeah i think it or, maybe as a so i think it's like a supplement thing duolingo makes sense just uh because i don't know it's kind of just like playing a game on your phone right so rather than playing snake or 2048 <laughs> you play duolingo instead and then yeah you're kind of getting it's better than nothing but in yeah. terms of full-on it's gonna be tough but uh yeah so i think we'll hop into the the full-on synth story now are you ready mm-hmm. and it's quite a story so we have notes down here but i think we'll just kind of talk through it i mean george and i both know her story decently well but i'm still when I know that I know your story, but still a lot of the things, I'm still like, how did that happen? You know what I mean? Like 400 meter hurdler, D2, how did you end up at Ole Miss? But we'll get into that. First off, so you obviously were born in Ethiopia and you lived there until about nine years old. Correct. What do you remember of your time in Ethiopia and then kind of going over to Italy? I just remember good times you know just just running around some school just a lot of playground stuff with kids just you know making houses in the trees like those kind of things that some people maybe you did it maybe you did i don't know (laughs) just like countryside people experience not downtown city you know yeah not the city life yeah of course also i'm coming from like ethiopia which is a bit different maybe than a countryside here but um it's not much i should i think sometimes I'm like mad at myself just because I don't remember much, but I don't know. Some psychologists say maybe sometimes you forget things for a reason. So, but mm-hmm. to be a nine years old, I think, yeah, my ba- my memory is pretty bad. <laughs> I don't remember much from before the age of nine either. Maybe I'm also suppressing things. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure, but so at that age, you got adopted. Yeah. By a lovely Italian family. Yep. Who, do you want to tell the story of? of uh your father's dream yeah so my mom she tells me sometimes so she said it when she has interviews that oh for, of course i have two italian sisters like biologically from my parents adoptive parents and my dad 
just before 2000. Uh, he had a dream just holding a baby, chocolate skin color, my mom says. <laughs> Still <laughs> now that I'm 26. <laughs> and after that, I just like talk seriously between them. And of course, I think they asked my sisters if they were okay with um, helping someone from Ethiopia. But they were pretty, like, Chiara, the oldest one, she was big, but Ariana was, like, six or eight, whatever. When they asked her, they said yes. And then, yeah, they brought me life and your word. <laughs> that was the, the start, my mom says. And then afterwards, they just, you know, got information saying how you adopt, uh, what's the process, and what we have to do to help someone. And then they will end up in the hands of Kripa family, which is a big... Uh, family they adopted in the same orphanage I came from and yeah and then they went to them and you know mm. how much would you have known about Italy didn't before know didn't <laughs> like know which part of the world it was in or? <laughs> I didn't even know where, where Ethiopia was <laughs> yeah. so that's what I'm saying like I come from not enough education to be honest and I mean the people you're around they're like all you know dark skin color but I knew there was a different, like, other people lighter than us because... But the people I, I remember my childhood, which I was, like, you know, running around, taking a picture with them, which most of the... You know, like, African kids, they're doing it when you're a tourist, probably. But those people are, like, super white. So after years knowing the history and stuff, I think they must be an old British because they were really white, white, <laughs> like, blonde and, you know. Yeah. So... Yeah, when they told me, you know, like none of us in an orphanage, we just knew we were getting adopted. That's it. We didn't care no more, no more, no less. <laughs> it's so crazy, uh, man. Yeah, it's wild. You go to Italy, welcome by this amazing new family. Yeah, and which was shocking. <laughs> yeah, that's. I've seen you show me pictures of when they yeah. first drove you home. And the whole how did you, there. How did you communicate shocked. with them? I still wonder. And my mom said I kind of like make gesture i was speaking my language back then i don't yeah. remember now but it was speaking italian and i was just making gesture and i don't know the only thing i used to say was just mama mama for anything mom <laughs> mom, mom. <laughs> even like i need to tie my shoes like mom because <laughs> that was the only thing i wanted and uh, i don't know I just love the women's i guess i was less a bit scared of men's so with my ma- my dad was a bit hard for a bit but then once he showed me love and i opened up with but yeah, it was pretty ridiculous, I think, in the house. Yeah, I can't imagine like going through a challenge like that, like at that age, just yeah, being in a new country with almost ten, you know. Yeah, when I got uh, in Italy. Mm-hmm. And like the yeah, without the ability to communicate, and then just everything is new. It's funny you've talked about sometimes how at first you didn't like Italian food. No, nope. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be pasta, bread, the pizza, not even. I just like the crust. And the yeah. fries, so that's it. <laughs> that was it. Uh, but obviously that's changed now. Yeah. <laughs> so there was um, quite a few years where, yeah, you kind of, I imagine, slowly, gradually made that transition, learned Italian, went to school, did essentially, yeah, just like the normal things that... Well, of course, I started like school. So we have five years of middle uh, elementary school. I went the last two years because I just, you know, even alphabetic, you know. Mm-hmm. So I was just literally learning. My mom was making like this notebook with like points, and I had to connect them to be like A, B, C, D, all over. That's what we did at one point, <laughs> probably. Yeah, like we were, we were like four years old, <laughs> <laughs> and I was doing it ten years old. The summer at this school before going to school, and then yeah, but then I don't remember like how hard it was for me. I think it was more hard for my parents, you know, to try to put me in the same environment that my sisters without feeling outsider mm-hmm. which the first few years i didn't feel it and then when i under- started understanding i was like why am i the only chocolate person here <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. yeah and then you know and what age did you start doing athletics i was 13 i think oh, so pretty quickly yeah but just for fun yeah yeah no, no, not like seriously and like three times a week uh, like everything like from jumps and short put and yeah did you enjoy it yeah i was good in cross country oh so you were always a distance runner i was but then i, I don't know why i guess for my ex coach like italian coach i used to have just put me in the orders. 
And so what age did you start doing the 400 meter hurdles? Because you did that until you came over to the US, correct? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I tore my ACL before that, but 2017, I stopped doing the hurdles. You started or? I stopped because 18, I tore my ACL. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I did it like for six years, maybe. Like for fun from like 100 hurdles, 60 meters indoors, 300 Every event, not steeples though. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. That, yeah, that's that's in Cinta's future. We do joke about it because she does still have really good hurdle form, <laughs> and she's she's got some strength as well for nah. for a fifteen go. Yeah. So, Wait, how'd you tear your ACL? Just jumping and trampling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think mm. I just tear it and then didn't know what ACL was. And then I run on top of it. Like after just the swelling was gone, I ran and then I think it just... You didn't get surgery? Yeah, yeah, I did. Oh. Yeah, but I just waited. Like happened Mm. and then it was like I had two sides of my knee and I was kind of scared. And I was in Ireland. And I landed, didn't know. (laughs) And then... You and Alicia both. Mm -hmm. Torn ACLs in in your past. Yeah. Something about it. Yeah. Stronger tech. Isn't your knee meant to be stronger after you go through it? Yeah, yeah. They say. So, <laughs> <laughs> we are kind of skip. like, there's going to be so much to this yeah. story. So, we're kind of skipping through a lot of kind of the early middle stuff. But to summarize what I understand is you knew that you wanted to go to college in the US. Yeah. And athletics was essentially your pathway there. I mean, I didn't know it was mine because I was not that. I mean, if you see my results before that, I was average like mm-hmm. you know, well, what, even. what was the draw to the u.s just it was a lot, bunch of italians my friends like, like people i used to race they were going to the u.s and i would just see it on instagram facebook like got a scholarship i'm like what is this yeah and then i just like i don't know i would just so into it i wanted to try it as well and the sense of i think you said to me before that like the sense of independence yeah yeah you wanted that because that was the same for me yeah i think a lot of people feel that way because home if i was staying i was i had to sh- choose between basically college like university or try to run yeah it's not quite as easy back yeah. there but so you you were in ireland because you were doing uh is it called au pair au pair yeah and it that- was just like my own experience mm-hmm. <laughs> before going to the u.s because i didn't know if i was capable of living a country this far when my english was okay like italian school level so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And the, so it was just my own challenge. So I went just like book it online, au pair, mom, I'm going to Ireland. Why? I'm like, I don't know, just for some English. <laughs> and five you spent months. Five months. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And that's still, that's really impressive in high school, I feel like. I feel like I that's mean, very I was independent. Older, you know, I was like, I finished. It was it uh, right after high school? High, yeah, I mm. finished in 2017. September, I did uh, some races in October, I left. And you had planned. Is it correct that you had planned to go over to college at a certain time, but then because you tore your ACL, you had to yeah. delay it mm-hmm. because you wanted because to nobody recover? Was giving me yeah, a cover plus nobody was offering me a full scholarship, which we all know as international, it's a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, somewhat of a necessity yeah. with the school fees. But you went through all that crazy process of the rehab from an ACL, coming back to being able to train and race, and then you end up at saint leo a, a small d2 school near tampa yeah. in florida which i don't think i'd never heard of it before me neither went, before for the, went. went for the palm trees <laughs> i just went because they told me it was nice it was an international it was hot i was like okay <laughs> that's all you needed so I wasn't trying to go to the midwest winters <laughs> but nobody offered so i was not like looking i didn't know much for, about ncas neither so i just like trusted it as Two people that in Ireland they advised me kind of. So no visit or anything. Nope. It's no, I just went there. Mm-hmm. Just even for all so I didn't have any visit. Just always went Send there. Fuck it. it, let's go, <laughs> let's do it. And when you arrived in the U.S. in Florida, how did it uh, line up with your expectations? I mean, I guess you didn't really have many expectations, but no, I, from yeah. what I've heard, you loved it. It was amazing. It was a good time. No, of course I changed it because it was time to change it too. But it was a good time, like. Just, you know, get to no hurdles anymore. So just like on the running perspective, doing my sort of 
35 kilometers a week. I was doing my, you know, 50 miles, very slow and stuff. But I just started like getting like US culture, mm-hmm. a lot of international. So our English was pretty bad as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it helps having, I think, a lot of internationals yeah. at the school in yeah. terms of welcoming you. But yeah, I guess if you don't speak, you still English. speaking Italian. <laughs> no, there was no Italian. No so Italian. Like, it was just some golf players. That's it. But everyone else was like French and Germans or my teammates were like half French and Germans. That would be so interesting being in that locker room, just all these different <laughs> yeah. languages. They're just flying French around. people are just like speaking French and Germans a little bit less because you know they're pretty good in English. But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so I somehow always had to put my thick or not thick, whatever. My yeah. I had to speak in English any either way. <laughs> yeah, to try your best. And yeah. so kind of back to the running when you got to St. Louis, was it going back to doing a wide range of events? Or were you really focusing on, on the eight in on the 8 and 15 at this point i think i did just uh cross country and then mile first mile and then eight yeah, no, yeah. because we didn't have even have a track so we just you know it was a small school you <laughs> so, didn't have a track mm-mm, just grass and sometimes we're driving to tampa university like whenever i, was I thought i've seen park. pictures of you and guys wish. that's yeah, that's was, in tampa but not our school yeah yeah oh that was a different mm-hmm. school mm-hmm Wow. And did you have a lot of success in at the D2 level? No. My cr- first cross country was like 160-something. <laughs> and it was at 5.15, my PR in the mile. <laughs> Wait, 5.15? I think so. 5.10. I think I had 5.10. Well, what did you get it down to? In the mile. Yeah, before, well, yeah, before you went to Ole Miss, what, what did you uh, run? It was just five ten, and I went on miss, and was already five forty. Four, uh, four. four forty, sorry. So we did a little break to restart the camera, and we're still shocked over since his five ten mile. No, we don't mean that in a bad way. We just mean that. In, how did you get to Ole Miss? Which is my. This is always my question. Since has explained this to me like ten times, I'm like, yeah, but how did like Ole Miss give you like a full scholarship if you were a five ten miler? Which there are many high school girls <laughs> running a lot faster than that. But that was my PB. And then I think I ran... You ran a good eight, two, hadn't you? Like two... Had you run two, two of... No, two twelve was in the US. And then I had as a PB 209, I think. In Italy. But not but, at St. Leo. So, no, my PB were pretty slow. But when I looked at... And I sent some, you know, emails... Because some people reach out to me through the rock. Did you just make up PRs? <laughs> no. Yeah. So I had a time trial and a three, a three k or five k something. So I put that as a result, which are like officially from you know we did a train, like the coach got the splits. So I put it in the email and I sent it to the biggest what SECs was, and stuff. What was the time for your time trial? Seventeen forty. Probably five k. Yeah, five k. Seventeen forty something. So what did Van Hoy see in you? I don't mean that in a bad way. Van Hoy. Yeah. So when I when I texted him, he said like straight away said okay, I want to talk to you, but then the, he told me that he saw my performance and I told him what I'd done for that year because it was a COVID time, so I didn't have performances. Oh, okay. The year I couldn't. That's an do, extra layer of. So I was like already pretty fit, but I couldn't do indoors because Ole Miss was not allowing us to do any races because of budget and stuff. And I sent my training and everything, and then he said, "Yeah, I want you." Just because he said he logged my races in Italy before my injury. So like as a sprinter, 56 and a 4 and 161 and stuff. And he said he saw potential. Wow. Ask him, ben, I don't ben know. Ben a smart dude. He must have been like <laughs> making some like crazy mental calculations. Like, all right, this much training. Yeah, this I four, told him how much I was doing This before. 400 speed, this yeah. pretty average 5K. <laughs> and then because I'm going to mix those together. One and year. she's probably going to win in NCAA. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Ryan. That's, uh, that's why Ryan Van Hoy is the coach at the coach at Ole Miss for it anyone me. Yep. <laughs> who was wondering. And so yeah, he is the one that brought Cinter on uh, when she said, "Sorry, St. Leo, I, I'm going to D1. I'm going to the big leagues." Yeah. You had a bit of a awkward um, exit out of St. Leo with the coach there. Yeah, it was not a good time, but he right. wasn't very happy about it. But what are you gonna do? You end up at Ole Miss, and then... Another so, one without a visit. <laughs> yeah, another yes. one because it was COVID, so I did it on a FaceTime. <laughs> the old FaceTime visit. <laughs> <laughs> on Zoom, whatever it was, was yeah. Like, here's, the school, here's, here's Oxford, nah, Mississippi. Nah, they had like a PowerPoint presentation. Oh, that's cool. I'd like to see that. 
you can ask Van Hoi to send it to you. <laughs> send it to good old, good old PowerPoint. <laughs> so you turn up in Oxford at uh, what month, what year? Um, Was it so the start of... I did one year and a half, silly, huh? Yep. So it was in 1920. So the start of 2021. Yeah. So December. Yeah. Start of 2021. You're in D1. And pretty quickly, based on what I've seen, things are like clicking. Yeah. So you're I had in- like two weeks of training with the team. And that's when I run my 443 something, whatever. Okay. So 30 seconds. 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And 443. You, so like, so you bad. guys should know D1. Like I have people to chase. Mm hmm. He knew I was trained. We did good training and stuff. So I was not like, maybe I just, I don't know. I was, I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, it does make sense. The races being it different does. as yeah. well. Like D1 to D2, there's, yeah. there's the difference there. But it's still crazy. So that first season, you competed in indoors. Indoors, yeah. And how did that end up? Was it the year that was indoors and then cross country? Yeah. Yeah. It was so the double, did, yeah. Yeah, I did both. So in uh, nationals, we qualified just for the DMR, which you got seven or whatever, last spot, seven, All-American, whatever it is. Oh, eight. Eight, like eight. yeah, eight. yeah, yeah we got eight. And then we drove to Seawater and I got, what is All-American again? 40. So I got like 49 to something. 50. So you just missed out. Yeah. I was but, second of my teammates though. There was another girl, uh, Anna Elkin was first mm-hmm. of the team and I was the second. My f- top 50 at enter the lake cross after yeah, it was like two days bad. <laughs> yeah it was very bad no that's an amazing performance I hate my life yeah. <laughs> yeah since it does not like cross country it's so anyone, painful <laughs> if anyone was wondering yeah and so i mean van hoy must have been like he must he have loved to coach you. Me. yeah he must good. Have been like, wow this is crazy what did you did you start winning like competing for conference titles already at that point uh the year after the year after yeah you so, didn't run outdoors or did you run outdoors in 21? I, yeah. Then I was we were still focusing on the eight. Mm-hmm. So I think I was like two spots out of our regionals to make it to NCAs. With 204, it was a big PB for me back yeah, then. So 204 by the end of that first half year. Of Ole Miss, yeah. At Ole Miss. And then <laughs> comes the big year of 2021, yeah. 2022, where yeah. you just exploded that year then. Yeah. Now I want to know where you came cross country though. <laughs> did you run cross again? Yes, I did. Florida? I did no. Florida. Yeah, yeah. American, 33. Very good. That, I think, Very good. I think <laughs> if you can, because you still weren't running crazy mileage at that time. I don't oh, think. it's like the max we did, it was 60, I think, a few times. If you can, that just shows raw talent, I think, if you can do that well in cross country. You see, Benno had the ice. Van Hoi knew. And then um, indoors and outdoors. I mean, I, time, this yeah. is when I started, like, seeing you race because this is when you started being at the front of the, the big ones. Go beam. You started winning conference titles and then indoors. Um, do you want to talk through your, that NCAA indoors? Yeah, so as I miss, we qualify for the DMR and I qualify for the mile, of course. And, yeah, it was good times. I let it go, but it sucked for a bit. I was, got a runner-up in the mile. Mm-hmm. But it was a tough time because we didn't like, I did the mile for the DMR. So I had like three miles in like in 24 hours, something like that, mm-hmm. which was not bad. It was like super tactic. And I was just like develop me how to race and also like seeing all this, you know, other people competing with me because other conference I've never seen them. And I'm pretty like a memory people. So once I race with you, I know how to play you, but yeah, you hadn't I never raced against, race against girls, yeah, Michaela DeGeneres, I never raced against her and Oh yeah, I thought like it was experience. not runner up to Sage. It was runner up the next year to the CU yeah, girl. Yeah, yeah, no. Because when Sage they won, won two years I was just the DMR. Yeah, that's right. The other yeah. CU girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you said that you were disappointed after getting runner up, but kind of taking that step back with the perspective of what we've just talked about. That sounds so crazy. <laughs> that that were, you, you were, your team, were your teammates at St. Leo like, <laughs> yeah, like, what, were, oh, like, sure, what the yeah. hell? <laughs> Who is this girl? <laughs> She's been gone for six months. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But even for Italy, it was the same thing. Like, everyone was just like, where is this girl coming from? And I'm still like known as Cinta Vista, the US, uh, whatever. Because mm-hmm. yeah. that's where you exploded. But yeah, you must, were you aware of how crazy it was, that, mm. that one year development? 
looking back I mean, now, it's not, not in much. One year, yeah, I mean, it was a lot of work. No, it's like, a lot of work. I put yeah in there with you know working, but I kind of like I always said it to Ryan Van Hoy, my ex coach, and I just believed in him because I couldn't believe in myself just because I was like, I mean, last year I was coming, you know, like from this level, and I don't know, I was just not aware of when it's like you're super good or something. So he was telling me like, yeah, you have to do this. You're capable of this. I just like kind of trust him. Yeah, I trusted him him more than myself. <laughs> and the workout perfect. So. <laughs> <laughs> was this also the season? Did Mario win the mile that year? Yeah, he so, won and I got second. Yeah, and then we swapped for the others. <laughs> mm-hmm. So there were like other people on the team showing that Van Hoy like obviously knew yeah, what he was yeah. doing. Like yeah. the whole team, I feel like was yeah, crushing yeah, yeah. it. At the yeah, moment. the guys were like crushing it. We were like. For me, just as a female as well, like the group was stacked, but the guys were doing so many, like, you know. Yeah, if you see Ole Miss, it's just always like the Milders boy, you know, so the Milders girls, you know. So that it's always been some good inspiration for mm-hmm. me, at least, personally. Yeah, when I was in college, like young in college, the Ole Miss men, the DMR, the, I think they won yeah. one of my first mm-hmm. couple of years. And so they were like a big yeah. deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we knew that they were... Uh, Knew that Van Hoy, because Van Hoy had also coached Eric Jenkins when he was, before he went to Oregon at North, North Eastern. I Eastern, think. right? Yeah. <laughs> so after seeing that, I think, yeah, Van Hoy was really known as like an up and coming, like amazing coach. And then, yeah, he's proved it time and time again. This just turned into a Van Hoy podcast. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to him. Enough, enough. Yeah. Shout out, I mean, he deserves it though. Now he's at, over at Cal Poly yeah. and he's already having great success there with his athletes. So shout out to <laughs> Van Hoy. But uh, you already foreshadowed it or more than foreshadowed it. What happened in outdoors Yeah, with Myra being the favorite i would say for the 1500 and then you probably also being one of the favorites at least and a couple of crazy races like the incident by races always are you uh you got it back over michaela yeah she came second in that race (laughs) yeah since since it came first and you can just tell the sense of just real i don't know if relief is the right word when you cross the line yeah yeah, it was yeah it must have just been so satisfying it was good (laughs) especially because there was a lot of tension just because we were all watching you know mario race the day before Mm -hmm. which was like you know that was the race of his race or something like he was supposed to win it they were saying all those stuff and i was just like oh my god and then now the next day is my turn Mm -hmm. (laughs) what if it happened to me so it's kind of like a lot of emotion going on yeah as it should be when you win when you win that first NCAA title and um, yeah, it was Van Hoy. He must, because I imagine he was a bit disappointed off the Myers. He must yeah. have been that really kind of made up for it, I guess, or however you want to say it. I never asked, but I was just happy for me. <laughs> <to be honest. laughs> and then things happen so quickly because you continue racing that summer. Yeah. Well, I guess probably... Before. Straight away. Yeah, straight After away. After NCAs, yeah. We went in Spain, me and Mario race. Mm-hmm. You run some fast 1500s? Yeah. And an 800? No. The 8, my fast was just the uh, uh, start of the season, 201 high. Okay. 201 or 6. Yeah. But uh, I went in Spain with Mario, after, like, literally like two days after NCAs. And that's when I run 4 or uh, 4. And I got, you know, my first Italian. As a World Champs qualifier? Yeah. I mean, ranking, I think I was like 0.2 off, but through ranking I made it, which I just learned it. I was like, ah, okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, whoops, I accidentally qualified for yeah. now. <laughs> you even know what the standard was. So. <laughs> I mean, I had a poor nine PR before, so. It's just so crazy how quickly things can happen sometimes, like especially, you see, I think you see it quite often with like NCAA champs when they come up like that. It's just like you get rolling, you have the momentum, and then you race at Italian champs. You did really well there. We second or third? Second. Second, and then you end up with the team on the team for Eugene. Start talking to brands because I before that you you probably didn't even consider the option of going pro. Was just a little bit, but just because I was around like you know Mario because he was doing the process, but ninety nine percent we were supposed to go back in college because <laughs> you hadn't graduated right yeah is it main reason sort of yeah that like plus had... because i didn't have like yeah yeah one one ncas but like you know nobody was 
mm-hmm. reaching out to you, like offering something. So I was like, let's just go back in college one more year. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, when it happens so quickly, it's just, it's unreal. And yeah, and you end up talking to, well, I guess during Worlds, you started talking to brands. Is that correct? Yeah. Once I was out of from first round already, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Yeah. And I just said, you know, four days to kill. So I just started talking to everyone, do some business. <laughs> And uh, you were at the on party. I wasn't there. Were you there, George? Yeah, I see none of you. Too. <laughs> I don't think any of us were there. But I remember it was at Worlds when I first heard from Brett's that he was, yeah, talking to the Ole Miss <laughs> in Subway Champ. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. Like, What's this name? <laughs> yeah. Well, my first two interactions with Cinta, we did, it, we did meet her in the lobby of Penn Relays. In the during the outdoor season but it was like a t- it was like a lot happening so it was a i quick remember one. these guys it was a quick <laughs> one but then at worlds i was at worlds um as a support figure a support character and <laughs> i was doing i was getting back into my own running and i had a workout to go do and so just a quick context for worlds we were staying in a lovely house that was i don't know 20 30 minute drive away from eugene and so we had access to one or two cars, normally just one car. So I was going into South Eugene to work out on the track. And so I was like, all right, we're taking the car for this time. I think Ollie was coming with me and Jason was coming with me as well. And then this was during the beginnings of the recruiting process. So Sage and Alicia had planned like a coffee thing with Cinta. And we were going to get coffee just before the workout and then go to the workout, but kind of like quick. Like just grab it on the way because it was already late. You know how it is. And then we were like, okay, well, we'll pick up Cinta so she can hang out like with Alicia and Sage and they can chat and do like the normal kind of get to know each other type stuff. And then we're sitting there outside one of the dorms in Eugene, which is where the teams were staying for like half an hour. And we're like, where's Cinta? Where's Cinta? And I'm not sure if you weren't responding to messages or you just couldn't work out. I didn't out. have data. So I was <laughs> going back and forth to the building to have connection and try to find the place I needed to be. So we didn't lose this, uh, this big miscommunication. And meanwhile, I'm like, I think it was already late in the day. And like before I work out, I'm like, I'm definitely more I hate tense. This girl. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I just really want to get my workout done. Like I've eaten my breakfast at this time. I've done this, and I just want to grab a coffee, do my workout. So I was just like, this Cinta girl, she's just the worst. <laughs> she's just the worst. I just, I just want to go work out and just do that. And then we, she, we never ended up seeing her. Nope. Did you ever? Get, you never got the coffee <laughs> with Alicia? Not that day. They just text me saying like. Uh, our teammate Morgan has a workout, so we have to go or something. I said, it's okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you got a co- coffee, had a coffee the yeah. next day, maybe? Yeah, when I met Joe and mm-hmm. then Leah. Yeah, it was like, I yeah. had a good coffee. They came pick me up. So made off for the next day, so, so it was all good. And then, <laughs> yeah, the rest, I mean, pretty quickly. I mean, I don't know how much we want to get into it, but you signed, you signed with On like pretty quickly, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, August. Then yeah. I came here. Again, without home. a visit. <laughs> what, is, what is up with it? I mean, I didn't Every, visit with the girls. That's it. Uh, I don't know. Every time. Still, I don't like wasting time. You know? I just go yeah. straight for the whatever. She knows. Hope for the yeah. best. Yeah. yeah. Seems risk to have worked it. Worked out every time. Gotta yeah. Risk it, risk it for the biscuit. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, you came up, which I was surprised because I had known that you had had a long season. I was like, she probably wants to just like chill. And then I heard you. Cinta was like, no, nah, I want to keep racing. Do some yeah, because he told me to come training here. So I'm like, if I'm training, I want to race, I said. Yeah, yeah. so raced out the season and then after that, um, made the, the big move to Boulder, Colorado. Got things going there. And I think we'll kind of, I mean, like we'll kind of skip through this stuff a bit because then it's like, well, then she's part of the team. But we do have to ask her. We've asked every other rookie. It's weird to think of you that you're, this is like your rookie season, you know? But we've asked, we asked Myra and Yard. I don't know who else we've asked. I think Josette, what they've, uh, how their experience has been on the team out of 10. I think you asked me. Oh, we already did? The last podcast when you asked me. Oh, uh, that was probably only after Sage. like a month. <laughs> yeah, that was probably after one week. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So it doesn't count. We'll, All right. We'll... I think I gave you seven that, that time, I is, believe. Is it going up or down? It's going up. It's going up. <laughs> All right. Good work. Going up. <clears throat> 9.5. 9.5 <laughs> it's good i guess it's been a great year for you so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so we'll take it i remember yard's 
went up a lot, but that's mostly because he started at like a three, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that? His first one that he said was so low for Wait, no reason. Was that for the visit or he just started at a three? He just started at three. It was a it was one that we did when he was living at our house in Longmont. <laughs> He came on the show <laughs> and he gave that. us, I might be over, I might be exaggerating with a three, but it was relatively low. It was low. And then he, he told us that it had gone up since then. Mario's was, I think Mario would been like 10 out of 10 since day one. Wow. Mario's just happy. It just loves everything. Just loves running so much. <laughs> so, and I can't remember what Josette said, but I think hers was quite nice as well. So, you know, it just, just feels good. We got a nice, nice happy team going, but um, I guess we can go through like, I mean, the whole year, now you're just part of the team. And everyone on the team, once you're on the team, you're training hard. The expectations are very high. You have all these amazing teammates. And how has that been for you in terms of, I guess you kind of get swept up on it, but then you go out there and you do it and amazing things happen. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had my highs, of course, with... um the two biggest performances that I'm grateful of is Florence when I run. For it was a time I was looking for the, like, since we started outdoors. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, the first race, it was like, still like 407, 407 or something like that. And the indoor was Miro's, which I was like, oh, okay, then the work. Because, I mean, I've been training so hard, you know, mostly with, say, just my training partner, but even just that. And, you know, they'd be everyone. But you see everyone having success, a team like this, you just wonder when it's your time too so mm-hmm. which is good though it it's was like nice it was milrose was that 24 yeah that was the italian 424 like, first italian record italian record right there yeah we had so many records damn it <laughs> all the team <laughs> they, they actually did i remember yeah. that now yeah it is it is the weird thing being part of this team I, I think it helps that we're all internationals we're all representing our own different countries you know yeah so when you go to me like that yeah it's just like all these amazing things happen and the bar the expectations are very high it's i can't think of any time i it's different say for me i guess because i'm coming back from an injury so like the expectations expectations are a little changed but we train at such a high level so when you race your your goals are similarly so high there's no there's not many races where we go into them and we're not trying to do something amazing. I guess there's some, like pen relays, for example, was one where you get to just go race, but... Or the cross-country one. <laughs> <laughs> cross champs. I, I think one of, the bigger, when, one of the bigger things is on the team, and I think it even shows with your um, journey of not really thinking that like there was even a chance of going to like, now it's just, it's almost just like routine. It's not like, mm-hmm. I feel like the benchmark is set like after making worlds like the benchmark isn't making worlds and then that's like that's what we're celebrating like the benchmark is to perform at worlds so that like the only way to do that is to qualify Mm -hmm. so i feel like yeah we yeah we take like a small amount of time to to celebrate qualifying but and like i think it's worth mentioning all although it didn't slightly sad turn events with ollie but all seven oac men qualified for mm-hmm. world champs and then it's like that's just like all right we'll set the bar there and then now it's actually just about performing at world rather mm-hmm. than qualifying and then just like all right that's it done yeah like like it's already it's already been done so. I f- yeah i think the mental i think that is like yeah it just removes so many what could be potential mental barriers i'm not gonna it's not like okay I don't know why I started thinking about this because I saw it on Twitter this morning. People talking about the uh, the mental barrier of the sub four minute mile, which apparently is not even true. Do you know what I'm talking I'm about? <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, this is a bit of an aside. People always make a big deal out of how when four minutes was broken for the first time in the mile, first, like people said it couldn't be done. And then the second person to break it was like a few months later. And then within let's say like a year like three people had broken or whatever so people use that as evidence that it was completely mental like the barrier of four minutes in the mile and once one person had done it everyone realized oh we can do it i think that there is some truth to that and i think you do see that on our team where yeah we don't even think about like these things are such big barriers we kind of take them more for granted like pretty amazing things but 
the thing with the four minute mile barrier thing is that apparently a lot of people also say it was just linked to like people coming back from the war so like people hadn't been able to train properly and stuff because of the wars and so like it just makes sense that like with the technology and people being able to like train that like they were that good at the time so that's such a random aside <laughs> and i'm like i might have popped a lot of people's bubbles because like i mean it's still a real thing though that there is the mental aspect of it but it's maybe not as great as what some people say it is but that's all just to say that um yeah we do like it does having everyone else around you performing pretty amazing things while at times it is tough to i think like have those expectations i think we have a big net positive from it where we know we're confident that we can achieve these amazing things and yeah you mentioned taking some time to celebrate them it is weird how much they can be taken for granted as well. And I think it's only once the season is done, but even more so I think once our careers are done that we'll actually be able to like bask in the glory because I'll tell you like from the inside, when we see say like the Oslo men, three guys running 329, like it's not even that big of a deal. It's like, it's like well done in our group chat. (laughs) And that's not even a joke. Like we don't, like you would think like, maybe i don't know you think maybe we'd have this massive party or something it's like you guys crushed it today <laughs> you know what i mean isn't that crazy yeah. to think about yeah, it? it's, it's, crazy. it's like once in a lifetime type stuff and we're just like good job guys and i just like <laughs> i just like heart the message <laughs> <laughs> so i think uh, it's all about having a short a short memory in yeah, the sport, you can't. for good or bad mm-hmm. if you dwell on like the the one good race or the one bad race forever like I feel like you just get stuck in a loop of and never actually get anywhere. Mm-hmm. And so Cinta was chasing the qualifying standard every 1500 this season, pretty much. I mean, now that the standards are so high, every race is very important because of the ranking stuff as well. But we still always want to try to get the qualifier because it just makes your life a lot easier. And that was 403, was it this year? I think it was 403 something, yeah. Uh, which is no small feat. And so every race, like you were still going out there and doing amazing things in the early outdoor races, but it was like, it's kind of weird when like four or three was your goal. So yeah. it's like, if you don't achieve it, you're like, damn, I want to do that. But then everything came together on that one night in Florence. And yeah. that must've been just an amazing feeling doing it. It was good. In yeah. Italia. <laughs> Fiorenza. Fiorenza. Yeah, With, I mean, that was one of those races of this year where... The world record was set and just it was one of the first one before yeah. how many others happened yeah. already <laughs> so just an amazing night to be part of and then you have the 401 to your name it's yeah again that's probably just a big sense of relief huh yeah now we have to do it again yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because that was before july before do it over but when once you ran 401 did that change your mindset at all in terms yeah of- i kind of like it's like a wall you think like oh my god it's going to feel crazy fast i don't know my legs i'm going to be dead in the ground none of those things happen i think because the camp like the <laughs> i mean you know she runs so fast we're like celebrating her and stuff uh fate and i didn't even think about the pain i was i was fine it's often like that i yeah. think when you run your pb i'm not sure if it's because that's the day that you felt great or you just you get clouded by all the positive emotions the pain does get clouded yeah. so you don't really remember it I, I think a lot of it does have to do with just on those days you get so focused that the pain becomes secondary to, you know, running the race, which is how you want it to feel always, I think. So you ran that 4-1, ticked that box of the qualifier, and then the next task for the season was just going to Italian champs and... Get my first win as well in that one. <laughs> yeah. After so many second places, indoor, mm-hmm. outdoor. Yeah, because we didn't even talk about indoors. You, you went back to run the indoor oh, yeah. mile, came second. Did uh, the Europeans. Wait, that was a 1500 actually, wasn't it? For Europe, yeah. For us, it's 15. Yeah. And then you got the title, and that was just last week down in Molfetta. Yeah. In Italy. And was there, what did you have to place to make worlds? Or what, I mean, did I you have, not really have to? You don't have to because three girls had the standard. And one person was like in the ranking. She's still in the ranking, but they didn't select her. Uh, because I, th- I don't think so they're allowed to pick more than three people, right, for event? Just three. Yeah. But maybe if she beat me, which is the girl I, like, fired last 
30 meters or whatever. <laughs> uh, maybe in that case, I don't know what choices we could have made. It. That would have gotten very would difficult. Would have got complicated. Yeah, the because then they would say like, yeah, she's in the ranking. She won the Italian champ. But the Italian championship is a lot like USA's. They're not used as a trials, you know. So the federation always make the ch- choice either way. So just better to win it so you don't have to. Because yeah. last year it happened the same thing. I got second. They said, okay, we bring you for wars, but for Europeans championship, which were in Mon- uh, Munich, they took another girl because I got second, you know, when I had the second fastest time or third fastest time, whatever. It doesn't quite make sense, does it? I didn't yeah. realize that. Yeah. Hmm. Which, yeah, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, pretty annoying. I mean, there's nothing I can do. <laughs> Just run fast and win. That's the only thing you can do with Russia. At least Europeans is quite often. Every two years? Mm-hmm. Next year is in Roma. Oh, yeah. Home Europeans. Mm-hmm. We're going home. That'd be a big home. one. They're like June. But pre-Olympics. So, yeah, pre-Olympics. That's yeah. kind of crazy. So that they would use that as yeah qualifier for olympics <laughs> it will be interesting you're gonna have a lot of big races then all in a row i think so yeah and so we've talked about this long long journey which has resulted in a lot of success a nice happy story up to this point looking forwards though the rest of your running career i want to ask what your goals are and kind of what's like inspiring you for those goals what a deep question yeah. <laughs> I mean, big goals as everyone is, you know, Olympics. <laughs> That's like the highest up there that everyone reached to go. And who is empowering me? Like running or just like as a. Well, it doesn't have to be a person. Life. But it uh, can meta- be. Yeah. Um, what is that? Metaphor. <laughs> Metaphor. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a person, though. It can be like. What is it? Well, like, for example. Like, it could be you want to leave a certain legacy. Like, that could be what inspires your running career. Or it could be you want to do it for the kids. <laughs> you want to do it for your father and his dream of the chocolate baby. <laughs> for example. Um, now that you're saying that, I never actually thought about it, but it could be for my parents. That still they don't understand much what is track and field, what I'm doing. But it still, since day one, they always supported me. So, yeah, it's that's beautiful. a good... Uh... Great answer. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was actually quite emotional, a little mm-hmm. insight. Like, after, I think after you did win the Italian title, just, like, your family and your parents, just if you do think about yeah, everything that has They've happened in their yeah. lives and in your lives to come around and it's like, wow, now she's out there winning Italian champs, like, doing all these amazing things. Yeah. It's pretty special. This. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, before we start getting too emotional, I think um, it's a good good time to start to wrap up this episode. Is there anything else that we have for today to say to the people out there? I don't think so. Coming to the end of our time here, one one more episode in San Moritz probably. Yeah, it should be. Well, wow. are you are you excited to leave San Moritz? I'm I'm pretty ready. Maybe. Although it's supposed to get nice and warm tomorrow, so maybe I'll like it better. I think that's going to be a big game changer. Still but, freezing yeah. here, if anyone's wondering. Yeah, it's still like nine degrees Celsius. Yeah. But I'm ready for a change, I think. <laughs> yeah. Change of scenery. <laughs> Got a be good old Budapest going. I don't know. It's going to be interesting being back in like the city after being up here. Yeah. It'll, It'll be, be nice. good, though. Have you guys ever been to Budapest? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was in Budapest in 2015 at uh, the Ziggit Festival, oh. which yeah. is like kind of what, I don't know. There's like an island in the, I think Ziggit means island in Hungarian. So I think it literally just means island. But I think Morgan was saying the hotel we're staying at is on the island that the festival is on. So I'm going back eight years later to stay on the same island that... I went to a festival right when I was just out of high school. So and also going like, full circle. It's like the same time of year, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, the festival is like either this week or next week. Great. Like right before we get there. Full circle yes. indeed. Center, anything else to say to the fans out there? Just I guess never give up. <laughs> never give up. Never give up. But just give. Find your find your people like uh find your Van Hoy. 
the people yes, that believe find in you out there. and inspire yeah. you and guide you even family though yes yeah. <laughs> and people to surround you mm -hmm. it's beautiful well i think with that that's it for episode 98 thank you very much everyone for listening we'll see you all next week ciao ciao <laughs> ciao ciao <laughs>